Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE biology lesson where you'll learn absolutely everything you need to know on topic 8.3, transpiration. As always, we'll be following the Cambridge syllabus exactly and we'll cover absolutely everything you need to know for your final exam. For topic 8.3, you need to understand the term transpiration and investigate the effects of temperature and wind speed on transpiration rate. For extended, you also need to explain the mechanism by which water moves upwards in the xylem, explain how temperature, wind speed and humidity affect transpiration rate and explain how wilting occurs. So transpiration can be defined as a loss of water vapour from the leaves and is the primary force that draws water upwards through the plant. Water evaporates from the surfaces of the spongy mesophyll cells and into the air spaces within the tissue. It then diffuses out of the leaves through the stomata as water vapour. The evaporation of water from the leaves creates suction, which draws a column of water up the stem from the roots, just like drinking through a straw. Water moves up the stem in xylem vessels and this flow of water is called the transpiration stream. Two factors that affect the rate at which water is lost from the leaves by transpiration are temperature and wind speed. You need to be able to investigate and describe their effects. For this one, a simple weight potometer is used. Thoroughly water a leafy plant, cover the pot with a polythene bag and seal around the stem with a piece of string. Place the plant on a top pan balance, record its mass, leave for a set period of time and re-weigh. You can calculate the change in mass and the percentage change in mass, which show us how much water has been lost through transpiration. Transpiration. You can then repeat the process by exposing the plant to different temperatures and wind speeds, which could be achieved by using a heater or air conditioning unit and an electric fan. We would expect the rate of transpiration to increase as wind speed and temperature increase. This is because water diffuses out of the leaf faster in moving air than in still air and evaporates faster from the surfaces of the mesophyll cells at higher temperatures. Now it's important that when investigating the effects of a variable like temperature, others like light intensity, wind speed and humidity are kept as constant as possible. If you move the plant outside, air movements and light intensity would be different, meaning you wouldn't know which factor was responsible for any changes observed. Okay, so that's everything for the core section, so we'll move on now to the extended content. For extended, you need to be able to explain the process of transpiration in a little more detail. So mesophyll cells have a vacuole, which exerts turga pressure against the cell wall. This pressure forces some water out of the cells which evaporates from the outer surface and into the many air spaces of the spongy mesophyll. The mesophyll cells that border the air spaces have a very large collective surface area, so water molecules evaporate freely and the air within the spaces becomes saturated with vapour. This means that the concentration of water molecules in the leaf is higher than the concentration outside. Since molecules diffuse from areas of high to low concentration, that is, down a concentration gradient, water vapour diffuses out of the leaf through the stomata. These openings are extremely small and are capable of closing to prevent excessive water loss. Also, as the vast majority of water vapour is lost through the stomata, their number has a big impact on rate of transpiration. Now, as water evaporates from the cells, it's replaced by water from the nearest xylem vessel. As a result, water is pulled through xylem vessels by suction and up the stem from the roots. This is known as a transpiration pull and is strong enough to pull water up to great heights in trees. It's made possible by strong forces of attraction between the water molecules, known as cohesion. In the very narrow xylem vessels, cohesive forces are strong enough to maintain a continuous stream from root to leaf. Next, you need to explain how variations in temperature, wind speed and humidity affect transpiration rate in plants. So as temperature increases, water molecules gain more kinetic energy, which speeds up the rate of evaporation from the surfaces of the mesophyll cells. In addition, warm air can hold more water vapour than cold air, as the molecules move more, creating additional space for others to move into. In still air, the region surrounding the leaf becomes saturated with vapour and can accept little more from the air spaces. Conversely, in moving air, water vapour is carried away from the leaf as soon as it diffuses out. This helps to maintain a steep concentration gradient, speeding up the rate of transpiration. It's also why your clothes dry faster on a windy day. Humid air is saturated with water vapour, meaning there's less space for the molecules in the leaf to diffuse into. This slows down the rate of transpiration and is also why your sweat doesn't evaporate and cool you down as well in humid conditions. In dry air, there's a much greater difference between the concentration of water molecules inside and outside the leaf, which speeds up diffusion through the stomata. 
Finally, you need to explain how and why wilting occurs. So as a cell loses water, its turga pressure falls. When water is plentiful, water from the xylem moves into the vacuole from the cell wall and turga pressure is restored. If water is scarce, however, transport in the xylem decreases, meaning the water lost to evaporation cannot be replaced quickly enough. This causes the cells to become flaccid and a plant with flaccid cells is said to be wilting. Well done, you've just covered absolutely everything you need to know on topic 8.3, transpiration. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate your subscription, and I'll see you next time for topic 8.4, translocation.